Good evening. How you all doing out there tonight? Uh, we're blessed um, to be in the number one more time. Uh, we're so blessed to be um, in this series on a Tuesday night. It's Valentine's Day. Uh, it's love holiday. And so uh, if you're watching this tonight, I certainly celebrate you. Uh, I want you to know I love you. God loves you. If you're watching this tonight, either uh, you're, you're so connected and you want this teaching, uh, you don't have any plans um, and, or you just have nowhere else to go. And so it, whatever it is, we're certainly grateful. We're in this uh, what I call this greater intelligence series. It's really um, a master class. It's a class that's going to teach us and cause us to become greater um, in the area of our intelligence. Um, intelligence is key. Um, I said on last week, knowledge is currency, is wealth. Um, the Bible says the people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so um, this is more than just a Bible study. Um, Bible study is more so, um, you know, we kind of, you know, unpack scripture a little bit. And we're going to, of course, do that. I'm a pastor. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily doing this in the form of a pastor. Uh, but because I'm a pastor, everything I do in my life is deeply rooted in the word of God. And so. Uh, even when I'm trying to do um, a lecture, if you will, it's going to have some biblical principles because that's that's in my DNA. Um, but God has led me um, to this series because um, the church in which I pastor, and and I say that because um, I've, I'm I'm embracing the fact that not everybody knows exactly who I am, and so with the church in which I pastor, we're focusing on this area of greater. I want you to type greater, greater, greater. Um, greater. Someone says, I, I have no boo. That's why I'm watching. That's okay. Quite on fine. I have a boo and I'm, and I'm teaching. So uh, we're so excited. Um, but I want you to type that in your timeline. Greater, 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 greater. Yeah, greater. We have this saying in our church that we've been embracing. And I want you to embrace it as well. Um, it's, it's threefold. Number one, I'm greater than my past. I'm greater than my present. And I'm greater than my future, my possibilities. Again, I'm greater than my past. I'm greater than my present. And I'm greater than my possibilities. That is critical. Because number one, you need to know that no matter what you have done, um, you're greater than your past. And it doesn't matter where you are in your present, good or bad, you, you're greater than your present. And certainly, whatever you believe is possible in your life, I want you to know that you're even greater than that. And so I want you to keep that in front of you. Uh, uh, someone on our team is actually working on kind of creating this little um, theme, if you will, this little declaration. And we're going to try to make this declaration portable uh, because it means so much to our ministry. So listen, let's go to work. Not going to hold you long. Uh, let's go to work tonight. Last week, we introduced the foundation of this series. Of greater intelligence talking about personal intelligence personal intelligence that is knowing more about yourself before you can accomplish anything um, whether it's finances or relationship no matter what it is you've got to know a lot about yourself so I want you to um, say I, I am great I am great I want you to say that I want you to say that I am great. Yes, I am great. You are great. You got to tell yourself that you got to encourage yourself that you got to give yourself that declaration. You've got to know within your heart that you are great. Uh, yeah, you are great. So we talked about this last week. Who, who am I? We talked about the who, the who was important. The who was very important. The who, uh, who we are is important. Um, you need to know and understand um, who you are. Um, you, that, that, that's so vitally important. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know how you identify um, yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you to accomplish very much in life because the who is absolutely important. you got to know so we found that last week. We talked about this who, not what, not who other people want you to be, 
it's who you are, not what people call you. It's who you are. That That's important. But now that we've talked about the who, I'm going to go a little deeper tonight. So uh, let's go to scripture. Let's go to scripture. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 is where I want us to go. Mark chapter 10, verse 49, 49 and 50. Listen to what it says. When Jesus heard, he stopped and saying, tell him now this, this scripture, just to give you some backdrop, is about a man that is blind, okay? So Jesus heard that a man that was blind was in his midst. And so he said, um, when the Bible says, when Jesus heard him, he stopped. Um, so the, 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 the story in Mark chapter 10, there's a man that's blind. The Bible said he hears that Jesus is passing by. And when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he cried out to Jesus. And the Bible says, when Jesus heard his cry, he said, tell him to come to me. So they called the blind man and said, cheer up. They said, come, he's calling you. That's what happened in verse number 49. But let's look at verse number 50. Bartimaeus, his name, he throws aside his coat. He jumps up and he comes to Jesus. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do? Jesus asked, my rabbi, the blind man says, I want to see. Don't miss this. The Bible says that Bartimaeus, he beckons the call. He comes. When he gets to Jesus, Jesus asks this important question. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus, the man said, I just want to see. Tonight I want to talk about now that we know the who is who, now what? Who, now, what? It's going to be good. Who, now, what? The who has already been discovered. We we figured out who we are. Now, the question is, what? What do you want? See, when you're talking about greater intelligence, I discovered as simple as this is, there are a lot of people that cry for attention but have any wants. They don't have wants. They don't know what they want. The most difficult person to deal with is a person who does not have a full grasp as to what they want. People that don't know what they want will always be complainers. People that don't know what they want will always be people that are very difficult to satisfy because they can never fully articulate what they want. All they know is in most cases, what they have is not what they want. But if you ask them what they want, they'll say, I don't know. It's joke. It's Valentine's day. If you've been around or married, uh, your loved one, your spouse, your boo, whoever you want to call them said, I'm hungry. And you say, okay, you're hungry. What do you want to eat? And you know, already know the response. I don't know. I don't know. So because they say they don't know, you go over a lot of things. Do you want red lobster? No. Do you want chilies? No. Do you want this? No. Do you want that? No. Want Applebee's? No. Want shrimp? No. Want steak? No. It's always no, but they can never articulate what it is that they want. So in order for us to fully be great, we have to know what we want. What we want is critical. What we want is crucial. What we want, the what, we've got to have a greater intelligence as to what we want. Because Jesus asked the guy the question, what do you want me to do? Now, Jesus helps us to understand something that seems to be obvious. But when Jesus, by Jesus asking the question, he's letting us know that the obvious is not always the obvious. I haven't told you to do this. Like and share. Text somebody right now and ask them, what do you want? What do you want out of life? He says, what do you want? I told you the man is blind. So... Many would suggest 
that the question that is asked is a very silly question. Jesus, how dare you ask this question? You should already know what he wants. Well, when Jesus, by Jesus asking us a question, he helps us to recognize very quickly that just because a person has a dilemma, it doesn't mean they want that dilemma to be solved. See, Jesus wants Bartimaeus to put on the record what he wants. Because just because he's blind doesn't mean he want to see. Oh, teach pastor, that's good already. Just because Bartimaeus is blind does not necessarily guarantee that he wants to see. You know a lot of people that are in certain dilemmas, but they have no desire to get out. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about desire. What do you want? That's your desire. What is it that you desire? Jesus says, I want to put on a record what you desire. I, do not, I, I will not be guilty of doing something that you don't want me to do. I will not be guilty of doing something that you don't desire. It may be obvious that you want to see, but I want to know for sure. I want to know that you know what you want. I'm willing to do whatever it is you want me to do, but I want to know, is this what you want? Because so many of us have tried to help people who don't want to be helped. We tried to do for people who don't want, want you to do for them. We've gone out of our way. We spent money. We tried to help people that have no desire to be helped. And the most difficult person to help is a person who doesn't desire help and so jesus has to ask the question and i want to ask you the question tonight what is it that you desire what is it what do you want in life what is it you know the who you know who you are the question is what do you want you know the first question that we were asked pretty much when we went to school one of the, one of the first questions they asked what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? You usually get asked that as early as kindergarten, maybe even earlier than that, preschool. What do you want to be? I love the fact that they ask that question when a child is young, because when a child is young, they give limitless possibilities. Glory to God. The child is young. They 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 are thinking broad. They're not thinking about money. They're not thinking about what it takes. They're, they they have a blank that, that that they have a blank campus. They're not focused on the color of their skin. They're not they're not focused on their background. They're not focused on where they live. They don't they're not focusing on how much money is spent in the bank account. They're not focused on any of those things. They begin to talk about, oh, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be an athlete. I want to be the president. I want to be this. I want to be that. They have a blank canvas. They have limitless possibilities because they're not hindered or hampered by some of the things that you and I become hampered with. And I love the fact that when I, when I embrace this desire, I feel the spirit of God saying, when you approach me, when I ask you, when I, God, ask you what you want, I want you to answer it like a child. Glory to God. I believe I'm helping somebody already. When God asks you, what, what do you want? I want you to answer it like a child. I don't want you to answer it worrying about money. I don't want you to answer it worrying about how. I don't want you to answer it worrying about the particulars. I don't want you to answer it worrying about a budget or, or worrying about other people and worrying about if you're qualified and worrying about your age and worrying about your background and worrying about the color of your skin. I want you to answer it like a child. I want you to answer it like you believe that you serve a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. I want you to figure out what it is you desire. I don't care how old you are. You still have desires. I don't care about your bank accounts. You still have a desire. I don't care about your past. We just told you you're greater than your past. What is it that you desire? 
that's so critical. If you're going to be great, you've got to have a full level of intelligence about what it is you desire. Because it cannot always be not this. It can't always be I don't know. It can't always be I'm still trying to figure it out. You've got to gain some intelligence about what it is you desire. Somebody put on the tagline desire. Come on, be my virtual uh, uh, media team tonight. Put on the screen desire. What is it that I desire? Because just because a person is blind does not mean they want to see. Just because a person has a habit does not mean they want to be delivered. Just because a person is poor and without does not mean they want to be helped. Just because a person is living in poverty does not mean they want a way out. So the question I have to ask you is what is it that you desire? Is it healing? Is it breakthrough? Is it is it a business? Is it some something monetary? Is it peace? What is it that you desire? What do you want? It's a blank canvas. It's a it's a blank slate. Don't don't come at it from from all the handicaps. Don't come at it from all of the setbacks and shortcomings. Don't don't worry about that. Come like it's a blank canvas. Answer it like the four year old child. This is what I want. This is what I want to be. This is what I desire. What is it that you desire? I want you, I want you to gain some intelligence about this. I want you to know this. I want you to wrap your, don't worry about what's happening. Don't worry about the present circumstances. Don't worry about your surroundings. What do you want? Do you want peace? I just want I just want this house to be empty. I just want to be left alone. I just want to go on vacation. Whatever it is, wherever you are in the season of your life, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. Whoever's watching this, whenever you're watching this, what is it that you desire? Now, here's something critical. Here's something critical. Nobody should be able to dictate what you desire. Oh, teach. I'm trying. I'm going to help you tonight. No one should have the power to dictate what you desire. This desire is not a group discussion. This is not a, a, a validation that's needed. This desire should not seek approval. Nobody can dictate what you desire. Your desires are built on your own terms. You do not live through the lenses of someone else. Don't allow your desires to live through the lenses of someone else. Because what you need may sound or look like greed to somebody else. I'll say it again. What you need may sound like greed to somebody else. God has blessed us, Kim and I. We we need a bigger house. Now, now, now people may look at look at the house that we live in, and it's 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 two car garage, got several bedrooms, got space, all this stuff, and 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 all of that. And, and, and somebody who doesn't have a house or somebody who may be living in a one bedroom apartment may look at our need or our desire for something bigger. And for them, it may seem like greed. Why you need a bigger house? No, 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 no. My desire for something bigger does not have to be determined through the lenses of somebody else. Because my need may look like greed to somebody else. And that's okay. Because my desire does not live for your approval. There may be someone, uh, we're, we're desiring to build God a house. 
There may be pastors or churches that don't own their church or maybe renting out of a school. They may be in a storefront and they'll look at our church and say, my goodness, man, I, why would you build? They don't have the needs that we have. So I can't diminish my desire because I'm basing my desire through what someone else sees or through someone else's experience. you got to know that. But on the flip side of that, what may, whatever you desire, it may be enough for you, but it may not be enough for somebody else. So the needs that I have for Zion, the budget that I need for Zion, the, the giving goals that I have for Zion, I got a lot of friends, a lot of pastoral friends and colleagues that they need what I need um, a, 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 a Sunday or a month or a year. I've got literally have friends that need what I need for the year. They need it for the month. Did you hear what I said? The goals, the giving goals, and the, the levels of, 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 of income that I desire for Zion in a year, I've got pastoral friends that need that amount in a month. What does that mean? It doesn't mean I have to raise my level or what I need because it's small to somebody else because it's relative to what it is you have going on in your life. So in other words, don't drive yourself crazy trying to base your desires based upon somebody else. It's whatever it is you desire. It's whatever it is you want. What I want, someone else may not want. What I need, someone else may need more. And that's okay. I'm not using someone else as a measuring stick. I'm not driving myself crazy. Oh, oh man, you need 500. You want, you want, you want a, you want $500,000 revenue? Oh, that, that's a lot for us. That's a lot for me. That's, that's big dreaming for me. But I've got pastoral friends that have five and six million dollar budgets. And that's okay. It's okay. I don't have to minimize or think myself or think I should break. Oh man, well, let me just, no, 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 no. That, that's compare. I don't need to do that. Cause what I need, they don't need what they need. I don't need. It's all about, per that's why I'm saying you got to get this intelligence. You got to know this for yourself and you cannot allow other people to influence you. To force you to try to do something that's not even in your heart to do. Are you, are you, am I helping you tonight? If I'm helping you already, just, just, just type, I'm, you're helping us. You're helping us. Here it is. Here it is. What is it that you desire? Told you I'm not holding you long. I'm about halfway done. What is it that you desire? What I desire is not based upon what someone else desires. Okay. He asks the man, what do you want me to do? And the man says, that I might see. All he asks is what he want. If you continue to read, he never makes blind Bartimaeus responsible for a sight. That was God's doing. There's some things that you desire. It's going to be up to God to do it. And that's okay. Because there's another what, what it is you want. That's desire, okay? But here's, here's, why, here's why I want to kind of push you a little bit. Again, this is a master class. This is on greater intelligence. I'm going to push you. I want to make you think purposely. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? All right, that's the first question. What, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want in a man? What do I want? 
I don't just want a man. What do I want in a man? What What is it that I desire? What do I want in a woman? What do I want? You've got to, you got to do this. you got to do this homework. you got to know this. Because without knowing this, then you begin to attack anything and accept anything. When you don't know what you want, you will ultimately accept anything. So you got to know what you want. Again, you can't get mad when a person constantly asks you what you want to eat. You can't get mad if they cook and present to you something you don't want. They ask and you couldn't tell them. So don't be upset now. If you want a state, say you want a state. Don't put the pressure and drive someone else crazy when you don't know what you want. I'm going to get a little insight and then I'm going to move, I promise you. Um, I, because I often get asked this question. As pastor, uh, a lot of pastors call me and they, they're so, they're so um, blessed by our ministry, especially those who kind of know uh, what we were 12 years ago. And they often ask me, how, how have you been able to do what you've done? And I said, well, one of the, the main things I believe um, that has caused us to be successful, however you want to define that, is I wanted to know what Zion wanted in a pastor. That was important to me. If, if those that are some watching, if they remember, they ask me questions, but I also ask them questions. What is it that you want in a pastor? You know why? Because I never wanted to be something they didn't want. Because I knew that if I became something they didn't want, it was going to be confrontational. So the reason why we've been able to move and do some out-of-the-box things and some would even call crazy things is because I finally, I talked about this on Sunday, I finally was able to be attached to a church that wanted the same things I wanted. They said, Pastor, we want a leader. We want somebody that's going to take us somewhere. Fine. If that's what you want, I, I, I might be the man for the job. So it's never been fights, confrontations, there have been issues because my desire and the church's desire were aligned together. I'm going to tell you, when you can get that level of alignment I'm telling you, we're going to talk about relationships later on in this master class, but I'm telling you, it's going to start with two people wanting the same thing. I'm telling you, you enter a relationship and one person wants children and another one doesn't, it's going to be problems. If you're in a relationship and one wants to own the house and another one has no desire to own the house, it is going to be a problem. So you've got to have intelligence about the desires. First of all, you got to know what you want and knowing what you want you don't, you, there's some concessions, of course, when you're in a relationship, there, there, there are going to be some compromising, but you've got to kind of know what you want so you won't allow yourself to be manipulated by someone else's wants. But I got to go, I got to go. Secondly, what are you doing? Mm. There's desire. Oh, that's good. But here's the question, here's what I want to push you. What are you doing? What does that mean? What are you doing to achieve what you're desiring? Oh, God. I want to know this. I know your desire. You want a house. Fine. Now, the question I have for you is, what are you doing to get the house? You want, you want, to, you want to graduate college. Fine. You want to go to college. Fine. Now, what are you doing to achieve that which you desire? Oh, teach. I'm trying to do the best I can. Because there's desire and then there's doing. You can't just have desire. There must be some doing. Are you feeling me tonight? It just can't be desire. I'm just going to dream. Okay, dream fine. Right, right. Dream, dream on. But what are you doing? That's the second part of the what. I know what you desire, but I've got to ask you, what are you doing? 
What are you doing that's going to help you reach that desire? That is critical. I want a chart. I want to give you a chart. Here it is. Desire, doing. Desire, doing. Desire, doing. You see that? You see that circle? Desire, doing. Desire, doing. Desire, doing. If you go from desire to doing, at some point, you're going to be doing what you desire. God Almighty. Ah, I, I, I swear, this, this, this is too good to be, to be free. Desire, doing. Desire, doing. If you complete this circle, you will ultimately be doing what you desire. You desire to lose weight. You start doing what it takes to lose weight. You keep that going on and you're going to be doing or becoming what you desire. Because desire has to be partnered with doing. And once you keep partnering doing with your desire, at some point you're going to be desiring, you're going to be doing what you desire. You may not be doing what you desire now, but that's okay. That's called process. But if you continue to do what it takes to meet your desire, at some point, you're going to be doing what you desire. Come on now. At some point, if you want to go and be a lawyer, that's your desire. And you begin to do, which is study, go to school, do all that. At some point, if you keep doing that, you're going to be doing what you desire. Don't be di distracted. Start doing. Don't be discouraged. Start doing. The desire doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight. You got to move from desiring to doing. What are you doing to achieve what it is you desire? Because I promise you, if you start doing, you will ultimately be doing what you desire. You, if you want to start that business, it does not mean you have to leave your job to start it. Start small. Do what you got to do. And keep doing that. And at some point, you will be doing what you desire. Or you will have what it is you desire. But you got to be doing Somebody shout, I'm doing, I'm doing. What is it that you're doing? What is it that you're doing? What, whatever your desire is. I'm not here to overly analyze. That's your homework assignment. I made to tell you, now, now begin the process of doing. I want you to put that, I'm going to put that back up. Can we put that back up? I want to put that up because I want you to get that pie. I want you to get that pie. Desire doing. Desire doing. You got greater in the middle. Uh, yeah, whatever your greater is. Desire doing. Desire doing. Desire doing. If you keep that, if you keep that going on, you'll be doing what it is you desire. That's the process of it all. That's what I want to get you to. I want to get you to start that process. The process of doing, man. You got to remove doubt. You got to remove frustration. You got to remove all the things that might be trying to hinder you. You got to remove all the, the, the fear and all that and just start doing. Just start doing. Just start walking. Just start moving. Just start posting it. You don't have to have everything right now. Just start doing whatever it is you desire. Start doing. When you start that process, you create what I want to call a little simple word. You may have heard it before. Goals. Somebody shout goals. That's what it is. When you partner desiring doing you create what's called goals. Goals is a little deeper than desires. That's how goals are formulated. Goals is a combination of desire and doing. I want to give you a working definition of a goal. All right. What is a goal? This is this is this is not necessarily in, in, in Webster's dictionary. Just 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 flow with me in the spirit. What is goals? Well, goals is simply this. This is a goal. I want you to 
take a screenshot of this, write this down. Anything that takes significant effort and strategy in order to achieve it. That's a goal. A goal is anything that takes significant effort and strategy in order to achieve it. So a realistic goal is something that takes effort and strategy. Okay? That's what a goal is. Something that takes effort and strategy. A goal is not something you can snap your finger and accomplish. A goal is not something you can pick up a phone and accomplish it. A goal is something that takes effort and a strategy. You've got to get those two things. It's going to take some effort and a particular strategy. Effort. Yeah, you got to put some work in, some time in, but it takes a particular strategy. There's a certain way you can get it done. That's what a goal is. It, it, it's, it's just not it's something you can just, just grab. No, 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 no. It's got to, if it's a goal now, it's going to take some effort and strategy. Say that with me. Effort and strategy. Effort and strategy. What is the strategy? How do I get this? There's a particular way that I've got to do it in order for it to get done. There's a strategy to it. You just can't really nill it. You can't just, just hope for it to happen. There's a particular strategy. And when you get the strategy or the formula to whatever it is you want to do, it'll always work. It'll work whether you're black or white. It'll work whether you're rich or poor. It'll work whether you're dumb or smart. It'll work whether you have a degree or not. It'll work if you get the right strategy, the strategy or the system. It'll work every time. I'm drinking water. Water in the scientific term is H2O. That's the, that's the strategy. That's the system to making water. H2O. Whenever I put those three things together, I'm going to get water. No matter what. If I'm rich and put that together, it's going to become water. If I'm poor and put that together, it's going to be water. If I'm black and put that together, it's going to be water. If I'm white and I put that together, it's going to be water. If I have a degree and put that together, it's going to be water. If I've gone to Harvard and put that together, it's going to be water. If I didn't graduate elementary school, but I put that together, it's going to be water. Because the strategy works Every time. It's not based upon all the other stuff that the world tries to get you to focus on. It's about effort and strategy. You've got to figure out what amount of effort it takes. And you've got to get a strategy, a working strategy, a plan as to how I can make this happen. That's a goal. Okay, I want to lose weight. I, I got to take some effort, but I need some strategy. I got to know when is it a good time for me to work out? How do I balance working out and eating? That's my strategy. I got to come up with a system. So whatever it is that you're trying to do in life, you, you need that combination. Effort or strategy, effort system, however you want to word it. That's what you need. You've got to come together and become intelligent about those two things. You can get help with that. You can get, if it's losing weight, you can get a trainer where we'll teach you regiments or strategies on how to get this done. But you've got to have those two things in order to have a goal. So once you get this goal, I have a goal. I have a goal. Something I desire and something that I'm going to do. That's my goal. Now the question is, 
what are some things I need? Three things, and we're gonna, I'm gonna let you hang out with your boo or hang out with your books or whatever it is. All right? Goals. Somebody shout goals. Goals, 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 goals. What is goals? Goal. Goals is something that needs effort and strategy in order to receive it. I, I wanna I wanna give you three quick things that'll help you with your goals. I'm calling this the goals to greatness. I'm reading a book called Greater Greatness. I'm reading this book. Of course I'm reading I'm reading on greatness. That's our theme for the year. You are what you read. You you can only be what you see. So I'm reading this book on greater or greatness. It's written by a man named David Cook. He was a um, trainer. He was a motivational trainer for athletes. He was he was not a coach. He was just a life coach, really, for athletes. And he was kind of mental. He 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 understood that um, athletes need not just physical development but mental development. So I'm I'm reading this book, and he says that there's a particular strategy that he found out that every person needed in order to be great. And I'm going to give them to you right now. Here are the three things. You need focus, passion, mental toughness. If you want to be great in life, at anything, whatever it is you want to be great in, if it's a cook, if it's, if it's whatever it is, whatever you desire, you want to be good at it, you're going to need focus, passion, and mental toughness. Say that with me. Focus, passion, and mental toughness. You're going to need those three things in order to be great. You're going to need focus, passion, and mental toughness. I'm going to give you all three and we're going home. Here it is. Are you already home? Focus. Where do you want to go? How bad do you want to get that passion, mental toughness? We're going to cover all three. Focus. Where is it you want to go? So wherever you want to go, you got to focus. You got to focus on that. How do you focus? I've learned that in order to fully focus, you got to keep the goal in front of you. You got to keep it in front of you. You got to keep it in front of you. Say that with me. Keep it in front of me. What is my goal? In order for me to focus on it, I got to keep it in front of me. There's a camera on me right now. It's in focus. The camera is in front of me. Whatever your goal is, in order to achieve it, you have to keep it in front of you. Don't tell me it's a goal and I don't, I don't see it. Whatever your goals is, it ought to be in front of you at all times. It ought to be on your dashboard, your refrigerator, and your cubicle. Whatever it is, you got to keep it in front of you, on your laptop, on your phone, on your iPad. You got to keep it in front of you. If you got to, if you, I keep just saying losing weight, that's just, that's just a hot topic. Losing weight. Okay. You want to lose weight. What's your goal? You want to get to 200 pounds? Put 200 pounds in front of you. Put it in front of you. I want to stop smoking. I want to stop drinking. Put it in front of you. Put, I will not smoke. I will not drink. I will not do whatever the goal is. Keep it in front of you. That's focus. Because now, when it's in front of you, you have something to focus on. Am I helping you tonight? Put it in front of you. Whatever it is you desire, keep it in front of you. So you won't be distracted. So you won't be lured. You won't be <clears throat> drawn away. Keep it in front of you. That's how you're going to achieve it, by keeping it in front of you. Then you got to have passion. Well, there's scripture that talks about keeping it in front of you. Look at, look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. The scripture is this. I'm sorry. There's, there's, there's scriptures that connect to keep in front of us, but we've got to embrace the fact and understand that, hey, if I want to do this, I've got to keep this in front of me. I've got to make sure that I'm always looking at it. In the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter says this. Let's get it on the screen. Paul says this. I count myself not to apprehend it, but this one thing I do. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me, and here it is. I'm reaching forth to the things that are in front of me. 
That's how I get to the goal. I get to the goal because it's in front of me. I have to keep it in front of me. I've got to keep it in front of me. When I come to your house, I ought to know what your goals are. It ought to be somewhere visible. It ought to be somewhere visible. That's why they call them vision boards. It's, you got to keep it in front of you. You can't just keep it in your heart. You can't just keep it in your head. You got to keep it in front of you so you can focus on that. No, devil. I'm not, I'm not smoking that. I don't want to smoke anymore. I don't want to be a smoker. I'm not eating that. I don't want to gain this weight. I, I, I'm, but I keep it in front of me. I'm going to be a business. I want to save $10,000. I keep that goal in front of me. Because I'm keeping that goal in front of me. And underneath that goal, here's what you should put. What am I doing to achieve it? So if it's a, if it's a savings goal, when you get ready to spend some money, you ought to write that on the debit card. You ought to put a sticker on the debit card. And say, I want to save $10,000 this year. And every time you swipe that card, you read that note. And then you may ask yourself this question. Is what I'm doing matching my desire? Teach, pastor. If it's a financial goal, put it on all. Put it on your checkbook. Put it on your debit card. Put it on your, on your laptop. However you spend money. Write your savings goal. And then ask yourself the question, is what I'm about to do going to help me or hurt me reach my goal? Because then you begin to ask yourself the question, is this necessary? Is buying this just necessary? Is doing this necessary? Is it going to help me reach my goal? God, this is good teaching, y'all. It's just helping me, but I got to keep it in front of me. If I'm going to ever get to that goal, I got to keep it in front of me because everything is calling me. If it's spinning, it's calling me. This dress is called. Don't let that dress shout louder than your goal. No, no, no. I got this goal for a reason. I got, I got to save this for a reason. I got to keep this in front of me. Somebody shout, keep it in front of me. Keep it in front of me. I'm reaching forth to the things which are before me. But if you, if you don't keep it in front of you, you're going to easily be distracted. You're going to easily be detoured. You're going to easily be delayed. Because you don't have it in front of you. You don't have it in front of you. Remember before this GPS system and all that, before our phone, we had a map, right? You remember, you old enough to remember the map? When you had to pull out the map, you we had the map on the dashboard. We didn't have the map in the back seat. We had to focus on the map. The map helped us to know and to figure out where we're going. We kept it in front of us. You got to, it's not a goal if it's not in front of you. That's focus. But secondly, passion. How bad do you want it? Or how bad do you want to get there? Uh, David Cook says, what separated the athletes was their passion. They were all great athletes. To make it to the NBA or the NFL, to the highest point, you can't do that without being great athletically. But a lot of people got there and lacked the passion to be greater. How bad do you want it? And you know what that means? How bad do you want it? You know what that means? What are you willing to sacrifice in order to get it? Whatever it is you desire, what's your passion for it? You know, you know, kids, you, if you, you've ever been shopping with kids, man, they go to the store, they always want something. You never take your kids to the store and they don't want something. They're going to always want something. But you know well enough to know, do they really want it? Or are they just asking for it? They just asking just that. They just begging. Always, they don't have, have a passion for it. They going to, you buy them that. And that's why we get upset. Because we buy them stuff and they just toss it. They throw it away. They didn't really want it. Of course they going to ask. But you start to now realize, I'm only buying them stuff that they're going to take care. That they're passionate about. Uh, 
in order to get to the goal, you got to have a passion. You got to, how bad do you want this? What are you willing to sacrifice to get it? I want a, I want a good marriage. That's the goal. That's my desire. Have a great, what are you willing to sacrifice in order to get that marriage great, get that relationship great? I want to save this money. What are you willing to sacrifice in order to get there? You can't spend and save at the same time. You got to sacrifice something. Most people never get to their goal because they're not willing to sacrifice. They don't have the passion for it. You don't hear them talking about it. You don't see them doing anything about it. They just put it out there. Oh, That's what I want. No. Where's your passion? Where is your passion? Where is your passion? That's the question I want to ask. Where is your passion? Where's the passion? Put it in front of you. That's what that's what Habakkuk was saying. When he was saying, uh, you know, uh, write the vision, make it plain. Focus on make it real big. And if you make it real big and you're passionate about it, you have people that run when they read it. I discovered that people become about the things that you become passionate about. Yeah. People become passionate about the things you become passionate about. That's just the bottom line. If you're not passionate about it, they won't be passionate about it. I discover that. Trust me when I tell you. If you're not passionate about it, they won't be passionate about it. If you're not excited about it, they won't be excited about it. If you don't love it, you won't love it. I'm, you got to be willing. You've got to be willing to be passionate about what it is. And then finally, here it is. It's on the screen. You got to have the mental toughness. Am I tough enough to reach this goal? Do I have the mental toughness. What's that? That means people are going to try to stop you. They're going to try to block you. They're going to try to, to deter you. They're going to try to do all those things. Do you have the mental toughness to push through a no? To push through a setback? To push through a not yet? To push through somebody walking away? Push through somebody, uh, whatever it is. Do you have the mental capacity to push past all that stuff to reach your goal? It takes mental toughness because there will be delays. It's not going to turn out exactly how you planned it. Do you have mental toughness? That's what, that's what he says, athletes. It's about mental toughness. It's about being down by 10 points in the Super Bowl and saying, I can still come back to win this game. That's mental. Because you are going to be down in life. You're, the person that you're playing against sometimes may be getting the best of you. But do you have the mental toughness to hang in there? To say, I can still do this. I can still win this. Because the goal is, I got to get this Super Bowl trophy. That's my goal. I got to push past this pain. I got to push past this loss. And I got to do what I got to do to get this win. I'm done tonight. I've held you longer than I wanted to. But what? What is it that you want? And what is it that you're doing? Your desires and doing creates the goal. When you have this goal, you need these three things. You need focus. You need um, uh, passion. You need mental toughness. You have those three things. I promise you, you'll set yourself up for success. I'm going to give you one last scripture because this scripture just blesses me and it encompasses all three of these things. The book of Hebrews says this. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith. For he is, for the joy, he is, that was what? Set before him and do the cross. Scorning his shame and set at the right hand side of the father. 
The Bible says, look at Jesus. For the what? The joy that was set before him. That was his focus. He, the joy that set before him. Endure the joy. His love for the people he was dying for. He had the mental toughness to endure the cross. Man, if you don't, if you're not, if Jesus wasn't passionate about the people he was dying for, there's no way he would have been able to endure the cross. If he didn't set the reason in front of him, there'd be no way that he would endure the cross. He would have never reached his goal. He was born not to raise the dead and heal the sick. He was born to die. That was the reason he was born. So he had to set that in front of him. And so in doing the cross and despising the shame, as the King James says, it, he was able to do that because he knew what the goal was. My time is up tonight. I want you to gain a greater intelligence, not just about who you are, but I want you to say, what, what, let me look at my what. That's your homework assignment tonight. Put something in front of you. Write it out, type it out, enlarge it, put it in front of you. You want to write it out and make copies at the church, whatever, whatever. Get it in front of you. Put it on sticky pads. Put it in front of you. Post it everywhere. What's this? These are my goals. I'm posting it. I want to keep them in front of me. People get in your car. What's that? Don't you move that. That's, those are my goals. Tape it there. Those are my goals. Laminated so they won't get washed away or thrown away. Do what you got to do to keep it in front of you. That's what's going to give you the energy. That's what's going to remind you. That's going to be your reason to function and to live because you're keeping your goals in front of you. God knows I got to go. I pray that this second class of this master class has been a blessing to you because I've been strategically focusing on personal intelligence. You got to know who you are, but you also got to know what you want. You put those things together, you're going to be great. We got part three. We got part three next week. Pray this is blessing you, man. It, it's been a joy teaching this 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 series. Uh, we got a long, 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 long way to go, but I'm um, I'm intentionally building your personal intelligence up because everything that you think you want or you want greater intelligence in until you get intelligence about who you are and what you want first, none of those things will even matter. All right, God bless you. God keep you tonight. Uh, if you follow us on Sundays, we look forward to seeing you on Sundays. Um, it's, it's been my pleasure. Again, we've got people watching that don't even recognize me or know me as pastor. They know me as this teacher, and I certainly celebrate you. I want you to know that God does love you. If you're not saved, if you're not actively a part of a church, it's a great time to be connected. We believe, I may be biased, but we believe that our church, our ministry is one of the greatest churches on planet Earth. Whatever drew you to our ministry tonight, we would that you would connect with us in some kind of way. Uh, we would love for you to be a part of what God is doing in our lives. God is blessing us to be a blessing to our community. He's blessing us to be able to build him a house that's going to help us to um, continue to position people to prosper. If you desire to sow any kind of seed, um, because with this type of teaching, uh, you may be desired to give something as a sign of a thank you. You know, in college courses, man, there are tuitions and in all type of seminars, there is a price to pay. Uh, I believe this level of teaching um, prompts you to even want to give and to so if you want to do that, all the information is on the screen. It is no pressure, but I do believe the word of God says, I won't do or give anything to God that won't cost me something. I believe this has been million dollar teaching that you're going to receive from this master class um people will probably pay thousands of dollars to get this something that you're getting for absolutely free i love you guys um be blessed continue to pray for me i'll pray for you we'll see you next time as we go and gain greater intelligence be blessed <laughs>